looking for speakers. Uh, looking for speakers or looking for topics, actually. So if you have an idea for a topic that you'd like to see us cover here, uh, you can email me at chris at kinsman.net. Uh, alternatively, if you don't know of a speaker, or excuse me, if you don't know of a topic, if you just you see a speaker that you've seen that's really good, that might have a great topic to speak about, I'm always interested in those types of folks also. Um, we're booked out right now, I think, through about May. And I've got a couple more people that I'm kind of trying to work in, etc. We can kind of try and work in advance, but always looking for new folks that we can bring in. Uh, our next meeting is February 5th. Hopefully I got the date right this week. Uh, it's going to be uh, adding AI to your existing apps using Azure Machine Learning uh, by Michael Abara. He's an AIM consulting guy that uh, actually helps me out with the Westside group on Tuesday nights. So that should be real good. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Brian. All right, thanks. Yes. After, after. Oh, do we have an after thing? Uh, we could have an after thing, but we, the gentleman didn't know. I'm going to go, I'll go over there. So You'll head over? Yeah, it's over. So, Frequently, we'll have a meetup over across the street. Uh, do you know what the name of the place is again? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> it's kind of after the boardwalk. boardwalk and afterwards, and okay. people will go over there, have a few drinks, have a little bit of food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if you find Devin, the gentleman right here, he'll kind of direct folks as to where that's at afterwards. Good, good time, a lot of people. Cool. Good time. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chris. Um, thanks for the welcome, and uh, thanks everyone for showing up tonight. My name is Brian Kostinis, as Chris said, and uh, I'm a co-founder at uh, Wilderness Labs. Uh, this is how you can get a hold of me. This is how you can find us. Uh, we're at wildernesslabs.co, and of course my Twitter, where um, you'll find nothing but inanity. So, uh, um, Wilderness Labs is a new company. It's uh, I. I used to work at um, Xamarin. I was one of the first. Uh, I was the first uh, leadership hire over there. Uh, about six and a half, seven, almost seven years ago now. And then um, I stayed through the acquisition, and then about a year ago I took off. Of, uh, I, I left Microsoft, we became Microsoft, and, and started a new company. And uh, we are trying to make hardware development as fast and as easy as software development. And if any of you have done hardware development, you know that today that is not really the case. Um, <clears throat> So we're working on some fun stuff. Uh, we now own uh, NetDuino. Uh, for those of you who are, um, uh, how many people here actually uh, know of NetDuino, have heard of NetDuino before? <coughs> Great, quite a few of you. Yeah, so um, we sort of saved NetDuino from the um, dustbin of, of, tech, of tech history. Um, NetDuino, I, you know, I always really, really loved uh, hacking on it, and I never really thought that it got a fair shot in the world. And so, um, when Secret Labs, the original creators of um, NetDuino, had, had when they started the meltdown, um, I uh, was able to uh, pick up NetDuino for a, a steal, and um, we're breathing some life back into it, making it a real platform, and it's been a lot of fun. And tonight, um, we're going to walk through. <clears throat> doing something with Netuino, doing something practical and real and, and kind of fun. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at what it takes to build a connected appliance uh, with with Netuino. And in, in this case, we're gonna look at something really really simple. Basically, we're building a smart outlet or an outlet that uh, or a connected outlet. In this case, uh, uh, we're gonna control power uh, for uh, for a coffee maker, and we're gonna we're, we're gonna control it from. Uh, mobile phone. So I have a big button here on my on my uh, mobile. It's a Xamarin app, and I, I hit the I hit the button, and um, my coffee maker turns on, and I hit the button, and the coffee maker turns turns off. And I don't know if everyone can see here, but there's a, a little a little light there. You can see it turning on. And uh, so this is uh, all done over Wi-Fi, 100% um, C sharp. Uh, the app is built in Xamarin. <clears throat> Xamarin Forms, so it runs on iOS and Android and Windows. And um, on the Netduino, uh, we're running uh, the .NET Micro Framework, uh, so C Sharp all the way through. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's a, uh, it was a lot of fun to build, and it's um, very very simple. And there's three parts to this. Uh, there's the there's uh, like I said, there's the Xamarin Mobile app. There's the application that runs. Um, on the uh, Netduino, and there's some hardware uh, that actually controls 
uh, household uh, electricity. Uh, we call it uh, mains, household mains electricity. In America, it's uh, 100 and 120 volts. In, in, the, uh, in Europe, it's two, 240 volts, or, or sometimes known as 110 and 220. Um, and the app uh, exposes control via a web server that uh, we built. It's pretty cool. So um, I mentioned that we acquired uh, we we acquired Netduino and we're um, building a new uh, platform or sort of around Netduino and we're also working on some VNX stuff that's that I think is um, incredibly incredibly cool. Uh, but tonight I'm actually going to give you guys a sneak peek at some new stuff as well that no one has seen yet, um, which will be kind of fun. Um, some unreleased stuff, but uh, something that I think will change uh, how folks uh, build with, uh, with hardware. Uh, so since we acquired Netduino, we've done a, we've done a ton of uh, work around it. We've, like I said, we've really created like a real platform. There's real documentation now. There's a community site that's pretty awesome. Um, you can buy Netduino today on Amazon. It's, you know, it's on Prime. And uh, if you order it right now, I'm sure it'll be at your house in an hour. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, what more could you ask for? Um, we're actively, we are actively uh, maintaining and, and expanding it, of course, even though we're working on some stuff that would be a, a spiritual successor to it. Um, and I mentioned our docs. Uh, definitely, if you're interested in hardware hacking at all, go check out our, our, our doc site, our developer site at developer.wildernesslabs.co. Um, fantastic uh, content there to help you along this journey. There's also a great community site, which is a community um, dot in this labs dot co. So if you're if you um, want to hack with some other people, or you have a question, or you run into challenges, etc., it's a good place to um, to get in touch with folks. Uh, and there's actually some projects, some fun projects going on up there. Um, I know some folks are making a MIDI. Um, controller with uh, Netduino, which is kind of cool, so people can uh, hack their, their keyboards and, and MIDI controlled uh, instruments and stuff. Uh, they're chatting up there. It's, it's pretty fun, so go ahead and say hi and, and whatnot. Um, I want to uh, jump into, uh, so we saw how it works, we saw, we saw it working. I want to jump into um, actually how, how this is all pieced together. Um, so the first part of this that I want to talk about is uh, power control. So in, um, in this case, this is a picture of what, what's over here, um, the exact same board actually. And uh, what this is, is we call this our appliance control board, uh, this plastic uh, thing here. And I 3D printed this. And you can go to our uh, 3D print uh, repo and pull down this uh, design. So if you want to have a, a board, there's also some other cool um, uh, baseboards like this that don't have the space for um, the relay if you just want a, a breadboard and, and, and a home for your Netduino. Um, it also fits Arduino, so if you have Arduino, you know, uh, you can use that as well. Not as nearly as cool as Netduino, of course, but, uh, <laughs> but, you, but it'll fit, it'll fit it. Um, so you can download this and print this out, and then at our blog, uh, you can uh, find, you just search for a connected coffee maker, you'll see the posters. Uh, instruct, details and instructions for building this as well as sourcing all the parts. And basically uh, what I have here is, it's, it's very simple, um, I've got a uh, Netduino 3 Wi-Fi model um, because uh, again this is all exposed via uh, 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 Wi-Fi. Um, there's a, a web server on here and, and um, I'm connecting to it that way. There's an Ethernet model as well. Um, there's a couple of Ethernet models, so you could you could uh, control this. Uh, you could plug it into your home network as, as well and control it that way. Uh, and then I have a breadboard here, and this breadboard is just sitting here. It's it's for further uh, expansion. Um, in this case, it's not really doing anything. I have uh, the power rails powered um, from the Netduino, um, uh, mm -hmm. but the I, it's basically the the. Most of the work right here is being done by the relay, and um, relays are interesting. They're they're uh, very they're uh, very simple, but uh, very powerful. So a relay is uh, typically an electromechanical device. It's actually a, a, a there's a magnet in there, and it's a magnet controlled switch. And what this allows you to do is control or isolate um, two. Uh, electrical circuits and control 
um, one of the electrical circuits with the other one. So uh, conceptually, you can think of it as like a transistor, except it's a, an isolated transistor. And, and in this case, what it, what it does is, <clears throat> is we use uh, low voltage uh, from the Netduino. We, we create an output port, uh, which you see some code up here. We create an output port, and we write either high or low to it, which sends um, power to the port. And using that 3.3 volts, we actually control our uh, 110 electric household electrical mains uh, electricity. Um, and through the use of the relay, and there's two on this on this um, key studio board. And by what by the way, this board is very cheap. You can get this uh, this relay board. I think it's like 7.95 or 8, 8 bucks, and you get two channels or two relays on it. Uh, so very affordable. Uh, you can get it off of Amazon. Uh, but what we're doing here is, is I'm actually able to turn on, uh, a, I'm, I'm able to electrically actuate this relay switch and power uh, the appliance. Now, like I said, this is a, a very simple case. I'm showing, showing something um, sort of uh, a very simple, very easy to build. But you could expand on this in a number of ways, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but it's very easy to then control with this setup uh, household electricity and turn appliances on and off. And you could expand this by, by uh, uh, you could be turning, you know, you could, you could imagine uh, you could be controlling heaters or any kind of thing at, at your house. And uh, the rest of the board is, is, uh, is fairly simple as well. Basically what I have here is I have two, uh, two power uh, buses. And uh, I'm running, this is an extension cord which goes off the pitcher here, so that's plugged into the wall. So this whole thing is self-contained and it's plugged into uh, the wall just like any other appliance. And so I'm splitting out um, the neutral and the hot leads uh, from, from the wall, from our, from, our, from our electrical outlet. And it really doesn't matter which one you put in there because with alternating current, it doesn't, it, ultimately it doesn't, polarity is not in, not important because there's because it's it's not a, a polarity um, specific uh, electricity type. Uh, so I've split these off and then I'm running uh, one of these. Well, one of these runs straight to the coffee maker. Um, so the coffee maker has uh, two wires. Uh, one wire uh, comes to the neutral, and then what I'm doing is that I run a wire from the hot to the relay and then from the relay to the other wire in the coffee maker. So what happens is that when I actuate this relay, it completes a circuit from, from a coffee maker to relay, hot, and then the other end of the coffee, the other side of the coffee maker plug-in comes into neutral. So that powers, powers the coffee maker. It's a very, very simple electrical circuit. I know that when I explain it, it, uh, it does it sounds a little more complicated than it is, but um, Seeing a schematic of it, which is a good idea, I should put that up um, at some point. Uh, seeing a schematic of it is, is very simple. And the other thing that I have here is that I want to, uh, I want to power the uh, Netduino because I want this to be a standalone thing. So I went to, I, I got off of Amazon, I got some of these little uh, mobile chargers. I'm sure you guys have lots of these floating around there. But they're like two and a half bucks off of Amazon. And, and um, what I've done is I've, I've taken the, uh, the, pl the plug and I've simply wired it to my electrical bus and then I'm powering the Netduino via a USB. There's also a power barrel if you want to plug in one of those, uh, you know, it was like nine volt um, adapters, but I wanted, in this case, I just wanted to streamline it and put it all on one board. Uh, so very simple here, and uh, this is the code up there I, I mentioned earlier, the output port. So this looks like uh, the, it's very standard C sharp. We're instantiating a new output port, and an output port is um, on the on the Netuino. There's a number of these uh, GPIO or general purpose IO. There's digital. There's a these digital headers here. And there's an analog header here, and then there's a there's a power header here. Um, in this case, I'm using the uh, digital pen, and the way the digital pins work is that they can read or they can write, and it's they're reading high or low, so it's just a digital signal. Um, Netuino also has a fantastic analog in uh, analog port with an analog to digital controller, so a lot of sensors and whatnot are analog sensors. They 
they return a varying voltage depending on what they're sensing. So for example, a temperature, an analog temperature sensor uh, that, that detects from zero to 100 um, would, uh, for 50 degrees, it would, it would uh, give you a 2 point, uh, uh, it 1.6, 1.75 volts or whatever, halfway between zero and 33. Three. Um, so, uh, so that's great. This is uh, a, a feature that uh, Arduino has as well, but you won't find on like Raspberry Pi. And so it's kind of a, a, a nice thing about the Netduino is that you're able to write C-sharp code, but you can also have uh, like real hardware access with an analog controller. And then also uh, the digital I.O. gives you a bunch of other things. It gives you I squared C access. Um, you, so you can uh, talk to uh, um, lots of different peripherals. So, uh, I squared C is a protocol that allows you to chain uh, multiple items together. It's kind of like the old SCSI um, uh, standard in that you have, you can have uh, an indefinite number of peripherals and each one's addressed and then you can talk to them all over the same line so you can have a whole bunch of peripherals running from that. And then there's also, um, you know, UART, COM ports and, and um, other, uh, SPI, which is another serial protocol, et cetera. That's all built into uh, Netduino. And there's also a, uh, you can see there's a compact flash um, uh, card adapter in here. And uh, that's over here, so you can put a compact flash card in here. And uh, then you have persistent storage, so it basically turns it into a hard drive. So if you want to log things, like say for example you're making a, uh, um, a weather station, you can log, uh, you could run the Netduino uh, via solar uh, because it's very low power. You could run it uh, via solar and then you could log data and then you could upload periodically um, or you could go and pull the card, etc. So that's, that's the power control portion of this. Um, now, the way that this, uh, that, that port is controlled is um, it's exposed via a web API. And uh, we built and released uh, some, a web server recently called Maple Server. And uh, it's really fantastic. And uh, it's, very, it's very clean. It's, it's, um, it, uses, it, it exposes a modern RESTful uh, web API. It has JSON built in. And um, it's very, very simple to use. Uh, and um, it's built, it's designed, it's purpose built for the Netduino. It's built on the .NET micro framework and uh, meant to be a very, very lightweight uh, control server. <clears throat> Here's actually the code uh, to, uh, part of the code to uh, control. Uh, this is actually our, the entire um, set of code that we use to uh, expose the web uh, endpoints. So we have three endpoints. <clears throat> um, I mentioned they're RESTful, so we have a GET uh, endpoint, a status, and then we have two POST endpoints, turn on and turn off. <clears throat> and the way that this works is that to uh, create a new web endpoint, <clears throat> you inherit from request handler base, which is part of Maple Server. And by the way, Maple Server is uh, published via NuGet. So if you if you want to use it, just create a new, you know, install a .NET micro framework, create a new .NET micro framework application, and then search uh, Maple in NuGet and you'll get the package. Uh, so very easy to add. Uh, you don't have to go and download some, from, you know, you don't have to go find it or anything. Uh, so the way that Maple works is that we use reflection to parse your uh, method names and we build out the API from that. So uh, you can see here we have our get status, post turn on, post turn off, and like I said, those map to those, uh, web, those web endpoints. And uh, very simple code right here. Um, <clears throat> post turn on toggles the power, or calls this toggle power method, um, passes true, and then sends a, a, a response back to the client of the status. And you can see toggle power uh, simply writes to our, uh, our, this pin right here, GPIO pin D, D1, digital one, that's actually where I've got the, um, the relay hooked up to. Uh, and uh, we have a ports class. Uh, it's just a static ports class that, that uh, where we instance where we where we define this. But um, it's it's there's not much to it. Uh, we're also writing to uh, the onboard LED. So on 
the, LA, uh, the Netduino itself is, uh, an, is an LED that gives you, uh, that you have access to. And so that kind of helps during uh, development. You can see, as you might be able to see, when I turn it on, the LED lights up. And so that's just a visual status uh, indicator in case I don't have uh, I don't have the relay hooked up or whatever. Then I can um, I can I can just take a look at that. So like in this case, I, I think I just bumped the wire and, and I plugged it. And I can see the LED is still lighting up even if the powder maker is not. Uh, and then the status response here just returns uh, some some JSON, and we automatically serialize JSON uh, for you. In this case. Uh, you just have to create a new hash table, and then uh, we take your hash table and um, output it. Uh, so all very, very simple stuff. It's a, like I said, it's a purpose-built, very simple uh, web server. It's you know, it's it's intended for this type of scenario in which you uh, you have limited code space and um, you're you're you want to uh, do very simple uh, endpoints. And then there is the uh, Xamarin mobile app. And uh, as I mentioned before, this is a Xamarin Forms app. Also very, very simple. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's got three elements on the home page. It's all defined in XAML. Um, and the actual, uh, the, the, the meat of the application that controls the um, our, 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 our connected appliances is simply a, uh, an HTTP client, uh, set, set of HTTP <coughs> client requests. So in this case here, uh, this is uh, a method that we are sending the power command, um, and we, uh, it, it's pretty